Here is the step-by-step -step process how to build your home on wheels. Once you make the purchase, plan it out. Always start with the biggest dimensions and demands. My demand was storing e-bikes without taking them apart. This dictates the entire layout. Bed would be pretty high, so I need to figure out e-bike's position so it can be as low as possible. Because we planned to live inside full time, we needed enough space in the main living area to move around each other without getting crazy. In the following step you should strip the van off, take everything out that doesn't have to be in there. In our case it was everything, the divider, seats, all panels and covers. Do all the mechanical fixing at the very beginning. This is important before you process any further. You want to have fully functional and trustworthy vehicle, so make sure it is. For some people it might be just oil change, for somebody else timing belt, tires. This is just too individual. After the car is sound and safe, make sure you can use it. For this you should have a seat in there. Swivel mechanisms are essential for us. The mechanism is pretty expensive and I was not willing to pay over $300 for each of them. I found some cars that have swivels by default and found those secondhand seats online. The only thing to make were bases for those seats to be fitted. Fun project to do and opportunity to practice welding for me. Next are windows or roof windows. Let's do all the main things right at the beginning. Decide where you want them and cut holes for them. Next I made a simple wooden frame to even up the thickness of the entire roof. The window climbs together like a sandwich and for proper fit it needs solid support. But just make sure the top part of a roof window or side windows is properly sealed. For that you need some good glue that is pretty resilient towards weather conditions. This I believe is skippable for most people, it's a paint job. First of all I did some body kit to fill some imperfections. Second I ran around the car with fine sandpaper and sent down some loose parts of the paint and rust. Third I washed and degreased the entire surface of the car. I know what I'm about to do is nothing conventional but hey, my project, my rules. I decided to just roll the paint on our van. Why? It's the cheapest possible way and I believe that this point fastest. I spray painted all curves first so I don't see strokes from a brush. That means door from inside, roof and just curves all around the van. After this I do two coats. The result is pretty good I can tell you. I don't stress about scratching the car at all. If I do I can anytime do another coat for a few dollars. There is plenty of pre-made camper van water tanks that you should use. I personally would never do water tank inside of a car if there is an option to have them underneath. The reason is of course space saving. I'm on a tight budget so I'm building my own tanks out of barrels. It's more work but I like these kind of projects. I'm connecting four 25 liter barrels together to create 100 liter fresh water tank. Another two together to make 50 liter grey water. These barrels fit perfectly under the car and I welded supporting frame for it with a board. This way tanks are covered, protected and pushed hard against the car from the bottom. Solars are pretty easy, you can buy brackets to attach them to the van and wire plugs that seal your roof. I don't buy them, instead I just got a L-shaped aluminum drilled holes to them, glued and screwed with self-tapping screws. For wires I just drilled holes and then sealed them with the same Sika Flex glue. Easy and cheap solution that does the job. Reversing camera is easy too. This one was just cheap from eBay and I read in comments it leaks after heavy rains. No problem, I siliconed it all around and instantly it's waterproof. In the following steps you can do wires or insulation, whatever you prefer. I decided to do wires. You should have all the wires in protective hoses so you don't cut through them somewhere by accident. I learned this later so please avoid it. Plan it like I did with a marker, that's a good way. This made it easier to work with. Plan your lights and switches, reversing camera, inverter, water pump, 
fan and everything else you are adding. I also added extension cable drum from the bottom of our van because it's very convenient to just pull the cable out. Make sure you have plenty of USBs everywhere. Cool extra trick for urban camping. I also made car charging reduction for charging stations. This way I can plug the entire car and use the power inside, charge e-bikes, etc. Cool thing to have is also a car charger, so whenever you are plugged in, it charges your deep cycle batteries too. Next is the insulation. There is many ways how to insulate camper van. This topic is broad that you should research it on your own. I chose to do silver double layer 18mm mirror In this case, it's important to cover everything with panels and leave some air gaps in there. I sprayed contact glue on both surfaces, car and insulation, and then just put it on like a sticker. My friend Richie is helping me out, I measured, he cuts shapes and this entire face took us only a few hours. Easy peasy. Finally we moved to some more interesting parts, again many ways how to do floors. The way I do it is lifting and evening the floor up and using the same insulation there. For the board itself it's good to use lightened plywood. It's pretty pricey so I just used off cuts that were lying around my workshop. On the top I contact glued vinyl for commercial use. This one is more resistant and difficult to scratch. Roof panel I measured and cut out of 3mm MDF. I made sure all my cutouts will fit and marked holes for lights too. Here on the video I'm using thick black fabric I had spare at the workshop to make the final result softer and thicker. Second layer is fabric I use for panels to have unified style. Next I made few stands out of chipboard, these curves copy the internal roof shape and I also stapled stripes of fabric not to damage new ceiling fabric. Installing this panel was pretty easy with all of this. I used the same PU mammoth glue and pushed the panel hard against the roof. The following morning glue was cured and ready to move on. Next part to do are panels. Cover all the insulation up. Some people do wood and cover the entire van completely. This is a good way how to insulate vans even more and many choose the specific interior look. I like modern look and panels are the way for me. First I contact glued my fabric to all of the structure parts of the vehicle that will be seen, like underneath the overhead units. Some places I cut MDF stripes and glued them with Mammoth day earlier to have solid base for the fabric. One panel above the back door requires a bit more because it's complicated shape. You can see I'm using plastic sheet to cut first. I'm bending it after, marking and shaping inside of the van and later posturing with two layers of fabric. I made templates out of cardboard and transferred shapes right on MDF. The rest is just cutting them out. Follow up in the same principle like the roof panel. Thick black fabric first and then my interior gray one. Splashback panel is thicker, 8mm painted MDF because I will be attaching things to it later and needs to be more solid. On the side door I used 1mm painted metal sheet that I previously made base for so I can just mammoth glue it on. For furniture different people use different material. I can easily tell the best one is lightened plywood. It's pretty solid, it doesn't warp with humidity and is super lightweight. I didn't have the financial benefit of working with ply, so I used free material at my workshop. It is 18mm chipboard commonly used for furniture in Europe. E-bikes are the biggest cargo dictating our layout, so I loaded them in, made sure they fit and then marked dimensions on the ground, sides and their height on the wall. Based on this I right away new kitchen size. Electronics compartment, entry unit and how much space I have for garage units. I'm starting with overhead units, making the frame as light as possible, that means cutting stripes, edging them, cutting them on sizes. It's pretty simple, for the bag I used 3mm plastic sheet, I had at my workshop because it bends very easily. Before I staple it on the unit, I contact glue black fabric on the facing side. To attach units to the car is one man job, as you can see by using soft tapping screws to the structural parts of the car. So on these photos you can see first stage of a kitchen, planning how it should go, sink, gas stove. Here I have the kitchen on a bench, working on it, making sure everything fits. Yep, here we have the first test of the projector setup that up to date makes me very happy. 
It was one of my friend's idea and I absolutely loved it. Very cheap 720p projector that runs on 12 volts and costs just a bit over $100. Here you can see the swivel mechanism for the table extension. Here we have the main layout, main living area. This is the first stage. Here is the groove for the screen projector. And here we have the projector screen fitted. This is the garage unit that helps with organization. There is also a safe. After you install all the cabinetry, it's time to plug things together. Wire LED, switches, water pump, wire the battery, fuses, reversing camera, fridge and so on. This is a very satisfying phase because you see the final product. It feels great. In our case, we are finishing the bed at this point because we don't need easy access to the back anymore. It means welding the frame and installing lifting support, making it ready for linear actuators that will be lifting the bed up. This last part is so much fun. It's adding things and features to your fully functional portable living space on a go. As you use the van you realize more behavior patterns and with a pinch of critical thinking you realize how to make it better. We added so much from the day one, like chopping board, spice rack, paper towel holder, laptop holder, extra USBs, temperature station, mirror, code hooks. It's so much fun to make it more livable, enjoyable and more personalized space. I see you made it all the way to the end, now you need to check out our van tour to see all these creative details in this van and how we operate inside. If you want to see how we travel and where we are right now, check out Margaret's Instagram at Curly Hair Camping and mine at Panorama Man. See you in another video.